jail! Hello fellow Chaldean Masters, welcome to the video where I talk about the new upcoming 5 star caster, Ilias Viel von Einsburn. Now if you aren't aware, this Ilya is not the Ilya from the main series that most people are familiar with. Instead, this Ilya is from the Kaleid Liner Prisma Ilya series, which is basically a card capture soccer knockoff in an alternate universe where the Holy Grail War doesn't happen, and where Ilya runs into Ruby, the best Kaleido stick ever who makes her become a magical girl in order to go on a quest to collect the servant cards. Before everything goes to shit by season 4. So it's a Modica Magica ripoff now. But that's not what we're here to talk about. Instead, we're here to talk about Ilya herself, the protagonist of this series, as she will soon become summonable for a limited time in our beloved mobile game during the upcoming Prisma Causeway event, along with best said Kaleidostick Ruby, who is the best part of her. Ilya herself isn't really talked about very much due to a few reasons. Those being her limited status, her niche audience, and the fact that her sister Chloe exists to steal all the hype. So to counter all that, I've decided to make a video to give her a bit more focus. As of before, I'll basically be breaking down Ilya so we can all get a relatively decent idea on how to use her and who to pair her with. So with that out of the way, let's begin. Officer. To start things off, Ilya's got the typical caster deck with an insane hit count for her arts card. Her HP stat is the second lowest of her rarity and class, but on the polar opposite scale, her attack is the second highest of the entire board, beaten only by Xuanzang. So despite her caster modifier, she's going to hit decently hard for her class. However, as you can see her NP rate is quite low. So you're really going to have to rely on those 5 hit arts cards to get tons of chains for her NP. As we can see with her skills, Ilya herself is geared to being a self-sustaining damage dealer, but able to give a slight amount of support with her targetable third skill. She has two skills that help with survivability, with her second skill having the helpful bonus of helping with her small MP rate. Finally, she has a powerful mana burst like skill that you'll likely use in tandem with her Buster Noble Phantasm. She also has a passive skill that charges her NP gauge by 3% each turn, which if you ask me, is a very welcome band-aid to her bad NP generation. That Buster Noble Phantasm she has is also a single target NP, one that does pretty damn good amount of damage for a caster. It'll also increase her own buster performance as well before it activates for more damage as an overcharge effect. However, after use, it will decrease her own attack and defense by 10% each for 3 turns. Which might sound trivial at first, but can be a bit of an annoyance due to her low HP as well as hidden caster modifier that reduces 10% damage already. Effectively meaning, she will only do 80% of her total damage for 3 turns after using that MP. However, after her interlude, her Noble Phantasm will also increase her NP gen and star gen by a bit. The latter is kinda pointless, but her increased NP gen is definitely a welcome benefit and will work well with her. So with her abilities out of the way, let's talk about usage. If you couldn't tell by now, Ilya is mainly an offensive caster, meant to be one of the few casters out there you can shove into a buster meme team and chain the red NP cards up. As an offensive caster, she is similar to Xuanzang in that she's heavily reliant on her single target Buster NP to play that role effectively. As such, you're going to want to get her NP out as much as possible in most circumstances, which isn't absurdly hard. Her NP gain might seem abysmal on paper, but with her caster deck, unlimited prana supply passive, and 5 hit arts card, it really isn't as big of an issue as you might think. If you really want to make her NP gain better, however, you can slap Divine Banquet or Prisma Cosmos on her. However, personally, I'd much rather use a CE that would boost both arts and buster effectiveness, like Tsukumihara Student Council, White Cruising, and the few other CEs that can fulfill this role. The reason for this should be obvious enough. Her NP is buster, and it's going to be her main source of offense as an offensive caster. 
as well as the fact that as a caster, she is very reliant on art cards for standard attacking. In a case like this, I find a balance between her deck and her Noble Phantasm to be more important than focusing purely on NP gain alone. This, however, does not mean that focusing purely on NP gain is a bad strategy. It can work, and it can work really well if you have the right team members. However, striking a balance will simply just benefit a bit more and give you the best of both worlds. Now, you might think that due to this focus on offense, Ilya might not be able to survive very well due to her low HP. Well, my friend, that's where her skills come in. Her second skill's main draw is that survivability, which can help her tank an enemy NP or a full charge attack. Definitely prioritize this skill for its invincibility rather than its NP gain if you don't have a good healer or defense servant, because the survivability it offers can be surprisingly beneficial in more harder levels. Her third skill can also be used to heal herself for extra survivability, and there's also a chance it can apply Guts for another chance to help her live through what would otherwise be a fatal blow. It also has a chance to grant debuff immunity, so you can consider using this skill right before her NP if you want to mitigate her NP's downside one time. However, since two of these effects have a chance of failing, if you want to rely on this skill, I highly recommend pairing her with <laughs> who is currently the only servant to make sure those effects will come into play, as well as boost overall team NP, which of course, is a good thing for Ilya. Of course, if Ilya herself isn't in a lot of trouble, you can always use this last skill to help an ally since it is targetable. But keep in mind by doing that, you're stripping away what could be a safety net for her for 6 turns. So, what could potentially remedy that? Well, here's a support that works fantastically with Ilya and can also help her with her low HP. Tamo no Mai, my beautiful fox wife. Tamo's kit, as always, will benefit any art servant, and Ilya is no exception. Fox Wedding is great for helping Ilya live a bit longer with its heal, and of course, her NP provides all sorts of benefits. She can heal her, she can reduce Ilya's skill cooldown for more consistency, and of course she can act as a charger to help Ilya get her NP even higher to shoot it off even faster. Their decks as casters also allow both of them to gain their NPs extremely well due to being full arts cards decks, even getting them to levels of NP spam. So since they're both casters, you're going to be using them against assassin enemies anyway, so why not? If you want to focus on NP power, you can, of course, always slap Heaven's Feel on her to make her hit harder. Although, you can also maybe consider Edison, as Ilya is one of the few cases where Edison can become a surprising asset. The reason for this? Of course, as a caster, his arts deck can also let you chain tons of arts cards for more NP gain in both parties. However, it's his third skill you want to look at here. Edison's concept improvement can pair very well with Ilya since her overcharge effect is increasing her buster damage before she uses her NP. At NP1, the buster effectiveness will be at 20%. However, Edison's concept improvement can boost it to a whopping 50%, which isn't even to include Ruby who is able to boost her buster performance again by 50% meaning you can essentially get off 100% buster effectiveness with her MP before interlude, and that isn't even including the potential ridiculousness you can pull off if you get her at MP 2 or 3. Believe in the power of direct circuits and our best stick ruby, everyone! Or of course, you can always shove a Merlin up there with her and make them quintet fire every assassin off the face of the earth, but at this point you really shouldn't need me to tell you to do that. For her NP debuffs, as I've mentioned, her third skill will work to prevent the downsides, especially when paired with <laughs> However, if you are in the need of a more consistent method, Medea will do the job, especially since she too is a caster with a standard caster deck, one that can dish out some decent damage herself with her NP spam. All in all, Ilya herself is a surprisingly good servant if you have the right team members to help her excel. On her own, she is a relatively balanced offensive caster, who can dish out pretty damn good damage for her class, use her MP quickly, and live long with the use of her two skills, with her third skill also being able to act as a bit of a support with her team members. She may take a bit of chance and experience to get the handle of due to her weird place as a buster offensive caster with survivability skills, however. 
Although, if you pair her with a good support that works well with her, she can be a surprising monster in combat. And once you get the handle of her, I promise that she alone will make you believe in magic. With that, this video is complete. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you fellow Chaldean masters somewhere else on the forever expanding interwebs. Until that time comes, farewell. Hey man pig, why are you such a big fan of Ruby? Hmm? Oh that's simple. What? She is actually Koha-chan. No more words need to be said.